the ball. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. It's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit, big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know, my dad walk on. Man, hey, man, we down here in Atlanta, man. It's going down, man. Check it out, man. We just, hey, we rolled up on the gym, man. This young brother right here, man, he really don't need no introduction, man. He been pretty much uh, living in the shadow because Pops are always going to be the shadow. Right. I mean, going to be he going to always be in his shadow. He, he, It's hard for him to it's get around him, it. Yeah. It's hard, but, you know, this dude is really dope. And he got Essence Man, Young Soldier Slims in the building. Little Soldier Slims in the building. What's going on, baby? Man, I'm cool. Thanks for having me. Oh, man, thank you for coming, man. You family. You don't even realize it. Like, you know, uh, once we get you, we got you. I, nice. Like, once we link in with you, it's like, damn, why he just called check on me? That's the way I be. Like, like yeah, I don't play with it. Because, God, I love the people that God put in my life, bro. You know what I'm saying? When you I come. Respect that. Yeah, because you got to realize, man, I'm an older cat. Yeah. So. And I've been through a lot. Yeah. So most of the people that I sit sit in front of me that look like me to go through what I've been through, what God sent me to them. So I'm able to help. You know what I mean? Sure. I could tell you some things that most of these niggas ain't going to be able to tell you what I'm going to be able to tell you because they ain't been through what I've been through. That's what I, that's what I look for in relationships. <laughs> Real talk, advice. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Wisdom. That's, that's all that really matters in relationships. Now, this one different. She's going to go somewhere that I'm not going to go. Right. She's going to ask you things that I'm not going to ask. Female right. perspectives, you know. All right. But that you know, because like, okay, um, the way how I think, I want to know you as the indiv- individual, not always the artist, not always Soldier Slim's son. I'm, I want to know what it was it like growing up, growing up without a father? Because yeah. so many people do that, whether because they lost the father or did the father just stepped out of their lives. Yeah. There's so many children, especially in the black community, that go through this stuff. So how, how was it for you, and where were you raised, and who ended up raising you? Oh, you want me to ask yes. that right now? Yeah, like, um, yeah, don't leave out Mississippi either, nigga. We yeah, I, don't <laughs> I don't never leave that out. <laughs> if you just seen, I was just going to be her. Like, no, um, Action Peaches told me that. <laughs> I moved around a lot. Um, I stayed at different places. I stayed in Mississippi majority of the time. As a kid. But you were born and raised in New Orleans? I was born in New Orleans, yeah. I moved to Mississippi like six. Six? With your mom? Yeah, my mom. My mom was side of the family is from Mississippi. Okay, okay. Yeah, so um it wasn't like no no crazy transition, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um I was either like six or seven. Your only child? But, no, I'm not the only child. My mama ended up having my sister the same year my daddy died. Oh wow! Wow, so I was like eight. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was, it was really straight. Like I, I grew up fast. I always was a kid. Like I had a cell phone at six years old. Mm-hmm. I always had my own house key. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I always been independent my whole life. Like anybody in my family that tell you that, like, oh yeah, you been like this. Like mom, you know, how a lot of people be having these stories about they so, but they mom be like, oh, I don't remember that. Mm-hmm. It ain't really like that for me. Like, anything I say, like, my mama gonna stamp that. Like, my mama know the worst of the worst stuff I've been through. I used to talk to my mama because for a long time it was just me and her. You know what I'm saying? That was just my best friend. Like, so, um, it, it wasn't it wasn't really easy. A lot of people grow up without their father. But for me, it was mainly, like, a lot of people pushed me into that reflection. You know what okay. I'm saying? Let me ask you something. I- Oh, no, I was going to say um, something continue. Did you ever have a, another male figure in your life that um, showed you how to become a man? Because you seem like yeah, you had a lot of I had a, I had a lot of I had a lot of male figures. Um, my daddy, daddy, you know what I'm saying? Me and him spent a crucial time in my life. I spent a crucial time in my life with him. He started coming to get me when I was like nine years old. He died when I was like 12, 13. Mm-hmm. But in between them times, like, it was, you know, he was the most crucial male figure in my life. My daddy, I mean, my mama, daddy. Um, my mama had men, you know. So it was like, it was a lot of men. I got uncles. Like, my grandmother had 10 brothers and sisters. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, I had a lot of, I had a big family. I was going like, to ask you about, I want to take it back a notch because I remember we when we spoke with, uh, Project Barbie. It was mm-hmm. more about like the day when when when, when your father passed away. Yeah. Uh, were you even in New Orleans then? 
I went to New Orleans that day. It was uh, Thanksgiving Eve. Just take us back down through that day and kind of how it unfolded. Uh, just the time because she gave us a story of how she seen she she actually seen your dad laying you know in front of the house when all this happened. Yeah. But for you, it's gonna be a different psyche because you wasn't actually there, were right? You? But no. just just that day, just the people and how they approach you about it. You know, being that your dad was such a big figure, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Just what happened that day? How did they even tell you about it? Because you was eight, you was old enough to know, you know? Um, so we was packing up. We was on our way to New Orleans for Thanksgiving. Um, Mississippi, where we stayed at, it was like an hour and 15 minutes. It wasn't really an uh, extremely long drive. Um, and I had talked to him that day. Okay. So in the process. What did you say to him that day? I don't really remember. You know, I, I just used to call him a lot, you know what okay, I'm saying? Okay, okay. And I was on my way to New Orleans. I think he had bought me some shoes for Thanksgiving, you know, okay. like regular stuff. Um, so we was packing up. We, I, I don't remember if we had left already. I think we was in the car. And my mama was on the phone. Phone just was blowing up, you know what I'm saying? And she, like, like this is my mama. This is my best friend. Like, she just told me, like, your daddy got, you know your daddy got shot. shot. You know what I'm saying? Well, I didn't know he died. Like, my daddy got shot before. Yeah. You know what I mean, like, they, people used to always tell me, like, yeah, your daddy got shot. You know? So he didn't really shake you? I I mean, yeah, it shook me because my daddy got shot. Cause, like, yeah, you know but, but like, like you but, feel like he might have made it through. So we went away to New Orleans, and then, like, it just went to blasting on the internet. And on, I mean, on the radio. It wasn't no internet. It went to blasting on the radio. Did he pass? Yeah, they got passed. How did you feel hearing it on the radio? I mean, I cried, but I didn't really, like, I can't really reflect back on the exact emotions of these emotions block it, that I had. Block it out as much as you could after growing up the pain? Um, I I blocked it out as much as I could, but it really affected me like in the most in the most times, the most crucial times where I needed a father. It wasn't really mainly about that's real. It wasn't really mainly about him being so to slim, cause actually I ain't understand that in the beginning anyway. That didn't even matter to mm -hmm, me. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Most Honestly, children don't. Yeah, my dad was a regular person. Like he with me, he was a regular person. Of course. And I done did concerts with him, major concerts. Like you know what I'm saying? Like. I done been in a studio with him, but he just was a regular person. He was doing this thing, like, you know what I'm saying? I know he liked to eat a lot of candy. You yeah. Know I, mean? <laughs> I know he thought he knew how to cook, but he really couldn't cook. Like, you know what I'm saying? I used to be like, bro, I don't want this. Like, I'm take me to McDonald's. He used to love, he used to be like, I'm going to take you to McDonald's. I know you don't want this. I'm going to take you to McDonald's. Wow, that's dope, like, but His favorite movie was Crime Partners. Crime, okay. You feel me? Like, mm -hmm. like I remember, like, right before... He died probably like a month before he died. He was sick. He had a real bag. I don't know if he had a cold, he had a flu, but he was inside. He was taking medicine. And he had a He had to take he had to watch me. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So um we was just in the house, we were watching movies and he was like, My favorite movie. You know, on crime on crime partners, the dude, the dark skin dude, he got burnt. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he yeah. Got dying laughing like that. Ah. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I remember stuff like that. Like um, you said that um, it affected you mostly when you really needed him. Give me a time in your life where you felt like you was him. going through something that you really, really needed him. That you think that affected you? Um, around the time, like, like I've been through a lot. Like I've been through a lot of stuff. A lot of people wouldn't think that I would go through. But you know, me growing up, like I said, I, I was grown early. You know what I'm saying? I was way mature, like way more mature than people my age. So like. You know, mama started, I probably had, like, being actively sexual around 12. You know what I'm saying? So of that played a part in it. That was, or like, man, my mom, my mom ain't just, my mom was hard worker. Like, my whole life, my mom worked two, three jobs. You mm -hmm. feel me? Like, we used to stay in a project. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? In Mississippi, like, it actually was just, like, when I started having problems with my mama, like, she used to put me out sometimes. You know what I'm saying? I had to go stay with, like, I probably messing with a chick and her parents would let me stay by her. Yeah. Or I probably go stay with my cousin. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And like I was getting expelled from school. But like rewind to times before that when I was just getting getting sent home from school, maybe like fifth grade, like around the time when Katrina happened. I used to get suspended a lot from school, fifth grade, sixth grade, but I always was smart. My grace was always up. So it was never like no problem to where I'm getting held back or I'm failing. Or nothing like that, you know what I'm saying? 
a year older now, and um, a lot of times when I see stuff like that, in my mind I'm thinking you're acting out from the loss of your dad and not knowing that that's really what is causing it. Actually, even re- rewinding back to probably like fourth grade, like, like I always had a counselor. Mm-hmm. Like I always remember, you know what I'm saying, a counselor come get me out of class, talk to me, you know what I'm saying, for 30 minutes or an hour every day, like this mm-hmm. was part of my school session. Of course. You know what I'm saying? A lot of kids can't tell you the experience that I really experienced that probably up until like about seventh grade. Did it help? Actually, I, I didn't understand what it was for. I didn't know they was trying to counsel me. Like, they just be asking me buku questions. Yeah. I didn't know they was trying to counsel me to be better for me mentally. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Um, I always was a smart person. I just was, I did what I wanted to do. So, like, around about eighth grade when I started having sex and stuff, and my mom started bumping heads, I really need them. Like, my grandpa was there for me. That, that's why I say that was one of the most crucial times. Like, yeah. this was my daddy, daddy. He really had to be in my life when I yeah. really needed him. Mm-hmm. But, like I say, he died when I was like 13. 13. So, like, one, as I get older, 14, 13, 14, my mom really going through it. You know what I'm saying? It's really like, I used to get on the train and just go to New Orleans by myself. So, yeah. like, I always had a key to everybody's house I needed a key to. My mama, both of my grandparents, um... My auntie, she's standing in New Orleans East, and I know how to catch a train. Mm-hmm. I know how to catch a cab. I always been a hustler. Like I used to get my daddy's CDs and sell his CDs. You feel me? I used to sell Soldier Slim posters. I used to sell my CDs early in age. I started rapping in his studio room, probably like twelve years old. My cousin and them, you know, what I'm saying on my own laptop, like just trying to figure it out, get into it because music was always a part of me. It was always something I wanted to do. And then a lot of my family members used to be like, I think you should rap. You got to rap. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But my grandma and them like, all of my grandma and them was like, no, you should go to college. So actually, I did both. You know what I'm saying? Dope, um, dope. Love it. Me getting, me going to college was really mainly about, man, man my mom been going through a the lot these last couple of years. I've been in high school. Do, 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 wow, I'm 17. Like, I ain't going to even be 18. So I can't even get my own spot or nothing. Mm-hmm. I went to college like two weeks after graduation. Just to get away. Just to get away. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. went to college. I did great. Flying colors. Because it was like, if I put my focus to anything, I could do mm-hmm. it. Do it, yeah. Um, what did you major in? My first major was accounting. I switched to business management. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I, at first, like, I really was interested in being an accountant. But it's not hard at all. It's something that I could do with my eyes closed. It's just boring. Yeah. It didn't excite yeah. me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. I wanted to do something that really excited me. Um... I went to college two, four years in the first semester of my third year. And I was like, you know what? I don't want to do this no more. So you didn't finish? No. I was like, I don't want to do <laughs> so this no at, more. At, when, when you were eight, is there anything that your dad really said that you kind of think back to? Anything that you remember? Um, that he, that, I remember that he kinda, stuff. You know, stuff that he might have said that stuck with you. Like... All right, I can think back on times even when I was younger than that, when I was like four and of five. Course. Like, we used to go see them in, in the jail. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I, I could think back on a few times I done went to see my dad in jail. And he used to always be like, this ain't no place for no man. You don't never want to tell you that. Here. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. Um, we, I really wasn't never to that age to really, he could just have real conversations with me. And that's what really bothered me the most. Yeah. Because, you know, everybody be like, your dad is really person. I have met. He told me this and that. Well, he ain't never really get to project that side on that me time. like that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, we had come up, but I was, I was eight. He probably thought I couldn't fathom that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Mm-hmm. So he ain't even. Dope. Man, that's just to, to have that whole umbrella, the litany of people that's around, I know they constantly came at you about that afterwards. You've been hearing that all of your life. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um, to find the true you in the midst of all of it had to be something else. You know what I'm saying? Really finding me. See, this is what made it hard for me to find myself. I'm a Virgo. My dad a Virgo. My grandpa, his dad a Virgo. Yeah. You feel me? So it's like the men who I looked up to the most is Virgos, but people like, you don't need to be like your dad. You need to be yourself. But naturally, like, this is just who he is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just, I'm going to move like this. Like I, So growing up, I always was like, I ain't trying to do nothing my daddy did. I ain't, you know, like, trying to, I kept a, a hole against that, but really I should have been embracing everything that came to me. On um, my learned that till I was maybe like twenty. Yeah, and I really just took off from there. 
Uh, did you, today is your dad's birthday. Today is my dad's birthday. Today is your dad's birthday. Today is the day that the album, your album, comes out. Yeah. Um, What's how the does, name of it? Trap Glory. Trap Glory. How do waking up to your dad's birthday year after year today? What makes it different today? Because um, the album's coming out. No, I always do something. I you always, always do something I on always, on your pop's birthday. I always do because growing up when I used to couldn't do nothing when I was really flat broke. I used to be really catching the city bus through New Orleans, you know yeah. what I'm saying, 18, 19, trying to figure out life. I used to just go and sit at his grave and bring a camouflage Dope. bandana. You know what I'm saying? Just put a bandana on his grave. But, like, the older I got, like, the more money I start seeing, like, I'd be gone. I might be in California. I might be wherever. You know what I'm saying? I've been traveling, like, ever since I was, like, 21 on my own, like, just making my own money, getting away. You know what I'm saying? I probably did more than, like, anybody I know in my family. You feel me? So it's like, now nah, I be gone. It's like, now nah, I be trying to have tributes for him. Like, I would have somebody make me, like, a tribute video to put on my YouTube. You know what I'm saying? If I didn't have my album drop. But I set my album to drop on this day. Mm -hmm. Like, I might drop another EP November 26th. You know what I'm saying? It just be like, I set my dates around certain dates. Like, Did you have any visuals on this one? Yeah, I, I got, um... How many visuals? I got like nine visuals out. I got like four in the tux. On there. this project? On this project. That's that's dope. They all on Apple Music. Okay, so okay. So you look the album up on Apple Music, the videos on that too. Um, so you don't even got to go to YouTube and look it up no more. Everything on Apple Music. It's great, actually. A lot of my songs kind of like, I, I always like shout my pops out. You know what I'm saying? When you go to the grave site and stuff, did it, did it kind of... You know, on these days, like say it was a day you was paying tribute, it it kind of made you have to go there and thought, didn't it? Not really, honestly, man. I I kind of like, you know how a lot of people it'd be hard for a lot of people to. I can't let it go, but I really gave peace to it. You know what I'm saying to the situation to myself, like I found peace within myself because I actually went through way more than people anybody know I went through only person really knew like majority of everything I went through with my mama you feel mm -hmm. me? like with counselors and different stuff like that's always been a part of my life you know what I'm saying so like a lot of people be like well he got real issues he really crazy you know what I'm saying but I'm a regular person like everybody got issues everybody go to go through mental traumas and you know what I'm saying a heartbreak do you like that. do you want to say something what about um BG, I, I met BG, uh, you go to my store when you come to Dallas, you'll see I got him on the wall with me before he went to prison. Did you get a chance, you know him and your dad, you know, they hung out. Um, did you ever get a chance to talk with BG or any of those guys? Um, Because you would have been young, right? Yeah, like, I spent a lot of time with him in the day of the funeral. Okay. Um, but not really after that. Not really after that? Uh -uh. Did but, people kind of pull back or were they... Yeah, uh, they yeah, pulled back then. Yeah, you know how people are. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like everybody had they did it. I, I understand it as a grown man. Everybody had they did it. They problems. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, they be going through what they be going through. And then me growing up to understand the type of person he was. Yeah, I understand. You feel yeah. me? But like, um, his, a lot of his kids. Like I, ain't, I ain't gonna just say like his son. Like everybody know I know. You know what I'm saying. But like a, a couple of his kids like drew to me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And we got relationships. Dope. That's dope. That's live, man. Uh, I tried to. I think I tried to interview his mom uh, a little while ago, and I didn't get her. But I'm still working on it. Um, just uh, I can get his son for you though. Really? Um, if you get him, that that where's he at? Right? He in he in New Orleans. Um, we got to get him. Ty Ty actually Ty locked up right now. That's what I was about to say. Like I kind of like like growing up, I, I went through a like. The backstory on me and T.Y., I met T.Y. when I was like 14. Okay. I used to hang out on Canal Street. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we uh, up in the teeth. Thugging it. He knew who I was. I didn't really know who he, who he was, but we just connected. We just locked in. Um, so like we kind of like grew up together. Dope. Because Dope. a lot of people meet, they, I, I didn't know this, but a lot of people do meet their best friends like between the ages of 10 and 15. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm mm -hmm. So that them really be like most crucial ages of your life. So we kind of like grew up together. We used to hang together. Um, but like we grew up doing everything together, and he just got caught with some guns and stuff. So yeah, he just got caught with some go. guns and stuff. I kind of um, I kind of want to say too much, but 
he in jail right now. Okay. So, you know what I'm saying? But that's still your partner, though. Yeah, you know, like, this is one of my close partners, you know what I'm saying, who I went through a lot, went through the most crucial times of my life, who I was broke with, who I got money with. And that's kind of why I watch what I say, I watch what I do, I watch who I go around. I don't really do As you too should. much. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't really be on young nigga time like we used to be on. You and you're doing the right thing, man. Cause yeah. you know you getting older too, Facts. and and you got you you here representing your pops, man. And right. I got three kids. You got three kids, and you here yeah. representing your pops. Yeah. See y'all, you you he, what would he want? You know what he would want. He yeah. would want you to look out for your three kids, of course, like you want to do as yeah. well. But at the same time, also to create this legacy that he would have wanted to see. You know, right. that's the, that's what it's about for us, man. After you get so old. You just want to see the next generation. My son's 29, 30, what, 30? He's 29 now. 29. That's yeah. right. Yeah, and he, you know, he's striving, you yeah. know. And the main thing is to leave a legacy when I'm gone that he'll, you know, be able to look at me and like, dang, you know, he did his thing. Your see, dad did a hell of a job. See, that's what I, like, that's why I, I, I know he would be proud of me because yeah. I really built all my shit from dirt. Like, I ain't yeah. no support with this shit for real. You know what I'm saying? At all, like, no financial support, no nothing. Like, everything that I got, I got it from the ground. You feel me? Yeah. And that's what I feel like he'll be more proud of more than anything. Wow. I hear you speak on Juvie a lot, too. How did you and him, how did you even link up with Juvie and all that? Um, Just being around New Orleans. He knew who I was. You know what I'm saying? You know how him and my pops was. So he knew who I was. He got a son. Like two years yeah, old. Yeah, you know? yeah. He rapped too, right? Yeah, we connected, you know what I'm saying? Once me and his son connected, like, I was going through times in my life where, like, I ain't really had nowhere to stay. Mm -hmm. So they used to let me stay at their studio, you know what I'm saying? I had a shower Dope. in there, Dope. couch I could sleep on, like. So, and he used to let me record for free. Man. And he and he let me, actually let me watch him build studios, you know what I'm saying? He, he, he like, brought me around, like, welcomed me to my, welcomed me to his family, like, um, man, his wife really loved me. You know what I'm saying, young young Jew mama. She really loved me, so it's like a lot of stuff was coming from her too. Like I done got out of jail, ain't had no gun. Like she done bought me a gun before. That's love, love, yeah, love. Like really. So like, she bought you a gun just so you could protect yourself. Protect myself. Like not on no go get into nothing. You but know just what I'm protect saying? yourself. Like I done got out. Of, like I, I went to jail a lot. A lot. Uh, you out here butt naked. She like I gotta make sure you good. She just know how me and her son rocking, and she know how. What, what it is with me and him and how we coming, you feel me? Like, mm -hmm. she was always be like, talk to me, like, don't hide nothing from me. You know what I'm saying? Talk to me, like, she, she was a sit down and really had, like. She from New Orleans? No, she from St. Louis. Oh, so she just wasn't trying to hear it. She knew the flavor, though. She a gangster. <laughs> she cheated up. Listen, man, she is a gangster. She probably more gangster than Juvenile. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm you? That's dope. Real tough. I love it, man, because you have bro. to be, man. She probably, like, she really, like, one of the. Most realest down to earth person, women, women, women yeah. that I ever really just had real conversations with. Like, like me and my mama had real conversations. You know what I'm saying? That's just cause I feel like my mama, my best friend. I could tell you anything, but anybody outside my family, like me and her, just we locked in. Y'all like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but they whole family, like they love me. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's crazy. So, so Juve just took a took a liking to you, Juve. That's dope, man. And his son, I and really his think wife. It was based you know? off the relationship I had with their son. Yeah. That really made them like, damn. Well, he they really like like they really got each other. You feel yeah, me? Yeah, they got we each went other. Through a lot. You feel me? Like, and he he done went to jail. Like, I didn't got him out because I ain't even gotta call your mama. You feel me? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We only gotta call your parents, but I got you. I'm gonna come yeah, get you. No. He gonna come get me. Yeah, that's love. Send me money, like. The daddy done gave me money. I just got out of jail. Here, man, here goes some money. You feel me? That's family. Like, young Jews, you be like, like even when we was flat broke before I even went to jail, start going to jail and all that. Like, he's be like, brother, you don't got no money. I'm going to buy you some food. Put some gas in your car. That's like, family. You know what I'm saying? It always was love. And a lot of people don't really know why. Like, they be wondering, why you took to them like that? Because they was more family to me than a lot of my real family. Boy, yeah, that's you real. Know? That's real. And it be well, like so, that sometime, man. So, that's that's beautiful, bro, that, that you picked up on it and that you didn't abuse it, but you embraced it. And that's love. I'm not no user and I ain't never really need nobody. Like, that's what people really love about me the most. Like, I'm going to go get whatever I need. You feel me? Whatever I need, I'm going to work for it. Like, whatever I got to do, like, no matter what, I'm going to go get it. You know oh, what I'm saying? Really? Ask nobody for nothing. 
What was it that she, because I'm talking from a mother perspective now, what was it that she had said to you that got you um, to break through to her, to be able to open up to her? Because, you know, being a mom, sometimes your kids don't be opening up to you and trying to, you know. My tell mama. You. No. Um, Juve. Ju right. Um, probably when she bought him the gun. Like, that made sense. Nah, 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 that was, <laughs> that was after that. we was already had a relationship. I'm just messing with you. It was just basically... Just a relationship I had with our son, and like the relationship they had, you know what I'm saying? He used to be telling her a lot of stuff I was going through, so she used to be reaching out and checking That's real. on me, like, "You okay? You good? You need anything? You know you could call me. I got you." Cause you know some friends would have been mad, like, "Why you be telling your mom everything? Don't be telling her." Nah, you feel me? Because <laughs> I, like for you to tell her that, you gotta have that relationship with her. Yeah, right. so people don't be having like I got that relationship with my mom. Like my mama. Knew a lot of the stuff, like, even when I was going through it, I used to be like, man, mom, mom I sleep, slept in my car last night, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Who the why reason, you know what I'm saying? Like, she'll be like, well, you're going to figure it out, baby. It's going to get better for you. But mom, like I said, my mom always was somebody who worked three jobs, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Like, three regular jobs, like. That's real. It was different, you know what I'm saying? That's but that's real. good for you because you ended up growing up seeing that work work ethics. Yeah, and I, my, my work ethic is out of the roof. Anybody will tell you that about me. Wow, man, just that's that's real. So, um, just the fact of having a relationship, uh, some kind of way, because I, I went from BG and I went to Juvie, um, Lil Wayne. I mean, just uh, interactions with the New Orleans, you know, the whole feel. Cause we just when we when we was down there, we uh, actually uh, interviewed Mac and some more people. I'm asked you about, but just the fact of doing it at Peaches, you know, the record store. We we, we rocked out down there. I love, love the feel, love the culture. Um, but as far as Lil Wayne go, uh, just give me a breakdown of his, just you and his relationship when you did link with him. Um, I don't know Lil Wayne. And yeah. I don't know if you seen my interview the other day, but I just spoke on this like. What did you, what did, what, what's going on? Talk to so me. So my first time I actually got to approach Lil Wayne, it was about to meet Lil Wayne. I'm like, bro, what's that? I'm like, I'm so the slim son. Like, I, bro, you know, I'm basically just telling him, like, bro, I'm a fan. Like, I'm so the slim son and I'm a fan. I'm in here with Juvenile. And he just, like, fanned me up. He was like, man, I don't give a fuck about that. Like, I'm God. It really walked up with his wow. two bodyguards. So, do you think he really, like, is this, this what no, he, no, that's what he on? Bro, people be on drugs. So no, 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 know. I'm saying that what he on, like, you was there. Like, how old were you? Man, this was like, I was with Juvenile at a Hot Boys reunion concert. So this was this was when, was it where was what city was y'all in? It was in New Orleans. It was I was there. Race. I was this down was there. Maybe, but this was maybe like 2017. Oh, okay, okay. This yeah. we just did it again. No, I was this there. Was like 2017. So this when you first meet him, you younger at this point. But how old was you? I'm like 21, and I'm ignorant. And I'm ignorant as fuck. I'm in a club. I got the yeah on me. He and didn't even know. But he he got his bodyguards. I think, he, I think he was really just mad because come to find out. Um, they had gave Juvenile his section, and I'm with Juvenile, so this is how we actually got to, oh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But I'm really like, we was getting out of the section, but I'm like, man, I'm about to holler at Wayne. Like, I ain't never get to meet Lil Wayne, you feel me? Like, I'm from that era of Lil Wayne, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this, you know, we is it like. So, yeah. He, he how did that like, make you feel? It made me feel like it was a bitch-ass nigga, but I don't really take stuff personally. Like I say, he could have been high. Like, bro, at the time, I used to take pills and stuff like I used to be high and tripping. So you know what I'm saying? People tell me stuff like and told me stuff about I, stuff I didn't did to people, and I don't. I'd be like, bro, I don't remember that. When you when he said this, you kind of just looked away and walked away, or did you just nah, stay there I, and stay? I, I booted them up and sized them up, like you know what I'm saying? It, oh, you look, cause you little I, dude. Yeah, he ain't no big dude. Man, I'm like, man, you tripping? Like, if he's shorter than you. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Me, I, mean, I seen him, but I don't remember him. him. Being we was that at the short. place with me little. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And what did he what when you side the nigga up? But you like nigga, you know it, it could have you know already you need these dudes I, I with you. Nigga. Around, told you, you, you need like, these man, that nigga just played on me like nigga. He was like, what he what he say? What he say? I'm telling him what he said. He's like, man, you should have stuck that boy. Oh, <laughs> that, that nigga just stuck me up. I'm like, man, I'm no man. We gonna go to jail up here. You feel me? But they like, man, we would have tore it down. You the hit would have tore it down. I'm like, man, we gonna go to jail. Like, finally hit him. He'd have been dead. I'd have been locked. Up, you feel me? Real talk. It would have been that type of. Uh, I would have been dead because he got, like I said, he got his bodyguards. You know what I'm saying? And you so had to stick on you. Problem, you feel me? Yeah, like we done got in here through the back door. Like I always been 
a think ahead type of person. I ain't never been no crash artist. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just glad it didn't. Work. <laughs> At least maybe, maybe you know, because during that time he was on top of the world. That was a time in his life where he felt like. He still probably feel that way though. Yeah, ain't no hard feeling. You know, at I the ain't end gonna never go up to him and be like, you, "That's the like, last nah, time." You know what I'm saying? I ain't like I used to not listen to people's music when and stuff like that happened, but I ain't. No, nah, you it's can't still let Lil Wayne. You feel? You me? can't let him get in your head. Yeah, no yeah. Hard feeling. What do you think about it? You're right. Can't let him get in your head. No, nah, because like I said, he's still he's still Lil Wayne, mm -hmm. the greatest like rapper uh, alive. Mm. We both look at I don't like, know. I, I, I don't, don't know. It's a lot of people It's a conversation. It's a conversation. He he probably is the greatest rapper alive. Alive. You know what I'm saying? No, for real. But the biggest, the biggest, I feel like Birdman saying this, the biggest is Young Boy. The who is? Young Boy. His son? No, that ain't his son. Young, oh, you said NBA. Yeah. Oh, the one the that. biggest. Oh, you talking about right now? The biggest rapper alive. Oh, uh, he said, because that's the young boy era. Man, these, mm -hmm. no. Everybody love young boy. No, no, no. These young boys, from kids all the way up, nobody not playing by young, young boy. Young boy is a new Lil Wayne. You know how we right. was, how I'm telling you right. how we was about Lil Wayne? That's how these kids is about exactly. young boy. That's what I hear. You feel me? But young boy got, young boy 22 years old. He came in the game like 16. And young boy got more plaques. Like his numbers, like I was looking at, he got almost... Is it? I think he got more. He got more plays than Stunner with the cold cash money. Well, I'm hearing, I'm hearing that Wilson ain't got a little more money than that nigga though. Who? Little baby. Little baby. Bro, I'm just saying. But listen, but man, I'm you, hearing that. Right? I don't know. So for let, sure. me, let me ask you this, right? <laughs> if you got, if you got, if I got forty million, you got sixty million. What's what's the real difference? It's not no big difference. It ain't no big difference. So you do you and, think and it's like that, or time, you think it's, it could be either way? Man, I don't, I, I feel like Lil Baby probably do. I, I expect Lil Baby to have more money than Young Boy. Let me tell you why. He ain't been in the trouble Young Boy been in. Young Boy yeah. been in it. Young Boy sat down this year. And he done missed at least three, four years the whole time he been rapping Did you since think 16. he would have beat that case? The Fed case? I ain't think it was going to be. I didn't like, either. He, <laughs> he beat that though. And that really like, man, that really made me look up. Like, look, I ain't going to say look. I don't really look up to people. But that made me like. Respect. I, I respect you even more. Like I already respect you just how you coming and where you come from. I really know where you come from. You feel yeah. me? I used to be in Baton Rouge in 2013, 2012, 14, 15. Like, so I understand it. You know what I'm saying? Where you coming from? Like, dude really did it from nothing. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. Nothing. Like, now, he, a lot of people do it from nothing, but a lot of people, all right? Like, let me say this. Like how we were just saying about Lil Baby. Lil Baby had help. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Lil Baby had. Young P. Thug, you know what I'm saying? Young P. Thug, QC, Young Thug. Before he was rapping, you feel me? Young Thug, for sure. Get in the studio, take this money, get off the block. You know what I'm saying? He had people helping him. Like, Young Boy had none of this. Young Boy just wanted to rap. And the nigga was like, you hard. You know what I'm saying? He came in the game on house arrest. So you that's, that may, yeah, he different. Man, he dude definitely different. different. He don't seem like he need, he don't, he don't love, he don't like media and interviews. He don't like none of that. Like, he don't like, he, he don't even have Instagram, dude. He got all that money, and he ain't going on no tours. Like, think about it. He don't be touring. He, don't, he finna go on tour tonight. He probably make the most money that people make four, five tours because he don't go on tours like that. Didn't he make a song? What was that boy, Nas? Nas X or something? I, I heard he did make a song with Lil Nas well, did, What do you think about that? He probably gave him an M. And then you got to think about it. He ain't like young boy in the studio vibing with him because young boy can't. He he was on house arrest. He couldn't leave. So all he got to do in this house just is send that, sit here and finesse send that the verse. Game. Send the verse. Buzz it over like, you know what I'm saying? Whatever, like. Damn, you right. You definitely right about that. He on house arrest. Like, he on he house arrest. He in the crib. So, man, little Slim, man, Soldier Slim Jr. here right here. Little Soldier Slim in the building, man. Y'all better stop playing, man. This boy is here. Listen, man, uh, this is a legacy, man. This this young cat right here, man, his dad, him, his kids, man. It's a whole just generations to come. This young man here is impressive. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So what do you want out the game? I actually just want to leave a legacy in the game. You feel me? I just, I kind of want my legacy to be like how my pops is. If I die or anything, I want to be like, man, that's, you know what I'm saying? That's the sort of shit I'm like, dude, cool. You want to be like, like I, your I, pops? I want plaques, you know what I'm saying? I want 
at least a Grammy. You feel me? I want stuff like I want real trophies from the game. I don't really, you know, nowadays everybody be I want a million streams. I want I want real trophies. Did you really? How did you like the? Um, okay, there's. I think it was was it was it, which who was it? Was it Fred O'Bang that remade your dad song? Somebody remade your dad song. Fred O'Bang just did one. It's a couple, you know. They yeah, what I'm saying. That. How do you feel about it when people redo it? I don't take it personally. I, I mean, is it a good thing? Do you feel like it's okay to do I mean, it? They just pay homage. You That's what I was saying. And then a lot of times, you know, it'd be statistics. So it's like me, my auntie, and my grandma. We make the estate. So you gotta, you know, what I'm saying you gotta. It's, you know, so you have to you have to go through the right circle to do it. Yeah, you gotta side. You know I get you it. Know. So you ain't you're just out here making it. You gotta Man, you gotta get got, it cleared. We got labels reaching out all the time, bro. Labels be cutting checks for that. Okay, so that that's 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 the business. It's business. You know yeah. So and really, I let my auntie, you know, what I'm saying, step forth in it because, like, she done had a lot going on in her own life. Like, I kind of feel like I had more um, opportunity to do business. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of like was able to do more hands-on business than she was able to I really be wanting her to. You know what I'm saying? Because you know it come with experience. It come with doing it. Anybody could teach you anything. They could be telling it to you, drawing out on the board. No, but it really come with you doing it to really learn exactly what's going on. How, so, how are you and your age? Let's talk about that. How, how, how far apart are y'all? Because y'all not that far apart in age, are you? We like four years. Four years apart. Let me see. I think my auntie was born in 91. You kind of got closer to her after, you know. After Man, my auntie company. grew up like sisters and brothers anyway. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, we grew up like sisters and brothers anyway. Even before my dad died, like, I, I, you know. Was, my yeah. grandma give me, it's me and my auntie. Like, we're only a couple years apart. Like, she used to torture me like me in closet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I really That's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she, probably, she probably be like, he childish. <laughs> like, like, like. Me and my auntie, like, me and my daddy got a lot of pictures together, but me and my auntie got more pictures together than me and anybody in my whole family. Wow, y'all close. Yeah. That's love, bro. Like I said, when we talk to her, and I do call her, she know I'll pick up that phone and call her in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. She just always uh, pick up the phone. No matter what city we in, she gonna be like, E, what's up, man, what's up? So that's a good thing that, that you know, that you able to, you, you had that bond. God has a way of filling gaps, you know what I mean? Yeah. He has a way of making it everything okay. You know what I'm saying? I, I believe that. You know what I'm saying? So, what what's next though? Like like uh, after this project, after uh, what what do you see far as your music career? Where do you want it to go? Man, actually, um, I I've been debating on going back into trying to shop for deals. Okay, you you because thinking I've about been that? I've independent a long time. Um, I turned down a lot of deals in my career, so yeah, I've been wanting to shout myself out again and get more into doing more business and music. At the times when I was turning them down, it really didn't make sense. It really don't make sense to get into deals nowadays, but it's basically like getting endorsed. Yeah, you know what I'm saying yeah, like you need that. Everybody need that extra. Yeah. you know what I'm saying. Cause I spend at least like a hundred out of my pocket in music every year. If you, you might well go and get it organized and, and more, that's right? At least you feel me. So I'd rather somebody come in and be like, "All right, you put two hundred, I put four hundred. You know what I'm saying? And that make me bigger. So I'm just looking to go bigger and grow. Um, my other businesses, I'm constantly growing with them. So what is what is the name of your other business? Um, well, I I got Soldier Apparel. Okay. I'm I'm a landlord, you know. What okay, saying? you got so a real estate. I got real estate, and I'm I'm looking to get into eighteen wheelers right now. Dope, you know? dope. I, I kind of want two Tesla eighteen wheelers to start out and man, just multiply. I, I want to go back to some man because you like I said it's a lot when it come down to peeling back the things, the layers of things that you've accomplished. Uh, I wanted to ask about the um, the fact of going when you went to see your dad in jail. Later on, you started to go see Mac and you ate, and and see Murder, right? I went to see see Murder and I got to see Mac too. Uh, okay, that's how they went because me and him talked about that. Me and Mac that he was locked up in the same place where see Murder was at. Mm -hmm. So, like, man, they was in there honestly. Man, they was in there like kids in school, bro. <laughs> you feel me? I'm like, bro, that's crazy. That y'all y'all excited, you know what I'm saying? But wow. I guess it's an exciting time when you get to see people from the world get to come visit you. You know what I'm saying? How and did you cool. see him? I mean, I set up a visitation. Me and C Murder daughters, we had a real great relationship. 
Um, I still, it's still all love and nothing. You know, everybody just grew up. Yeah. But like when we was younger, when we was trying to figure out what we was having going on, we was real close. I used to be with them almost every day. You know what I'm saying? Even if I wasn't with them, I used to talk with them every day. But, so, yeah, his daughter ended up setting up the visitation for me. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. he really wanted to see me, so he called for me. You know what I'm saying? His daughter set up the visitation. He used to call me a lot. That's how I got a couple skits over the phones and stuff. You know what I'm saying? He helped me, like, structure my first project. Um, we had a song that we had already did when he was on house arrest. So, you know, it was like, it, it was cool. It was cool to just have, to know the relationship and to just be able to, you know what I'm saying, be a part of that. How how was it, though, like, like conversating with, 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 how is it? Do you still talk with him? I ain't talked to him in a minute. Um, I was supposed to go, he had sent for me a, another visitation probably, like, two, three months after that visitation. But by that time, I had caught a case, so I couldn't even do the visitation no more. And we just lost connect, bro. Like I said, I started getting into a lot of more other stuff. You know, you know, I'd be like, I kept changing my phone numbers. Do you think you'll ever go back and see him? Yeah, once I get all my legal stuff cleared up, I'm just not eligible right now. Yeah, but at some point, you want to yeah. go back and reconnect with yeah. him. Because like that's, that's a um, tough break, man. I still man. got him on my JP. I just rolled him not too long ago on JP. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah like, you'll, you'll reach out to him every yeah, now. Like, it, it was cool. Like, I was able to sit down with him. I bought him lunch. You know dope, what I'm saying? Dope. Kicked it like, yeah, you know. How did you see Mac, though, during that time? Was he just coming out just to visit somebody himself when you went there? His, his wife was there at the time. There it is. So, all of us was able to sit down and eat together. Dope, dope. Yeah, it was like a cafeteria room. Okay, you know okay, just like cafeteria, you just yeah. basically everybody come out. Everybody come out. Do you remember the conversation like when, with Mac and y'all, or you just like, hey, how you doing, man? Good to see you. Uh, you know, just talk like we had. Oh, uh, we had been talking. You know what I'm saying? Mac used to be coming to the phone talking on him, so we had been talking. It was okay, just okay, it made you know sense. What I'm saying? Just it was just love, just embracing each other. You know what I'm saying? He was really talking about you know how they be mad, your daddy, bro. You know what I'm saying? Of they course, looking at him, of course, going through it. But I under like I ain't never. I understood it, but I didn't understand it as much as I do now because I know people who got kids who done lost their life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I be looking at their kids like, damn, bro, I really know your dad. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so you you get it. I understand it now. So yeah. it's like the more I grow up, the more the older I get, the more I understand. Have you got to, Have you gotten to speak to Max since he been home? Yeah, um, a few times. Okay. Yeah. So that that's a good thing. It's always a good thing when you can reconnect out here honestly, in the free world. I kind of right? I kind of honestly feel like I should do a lot more. I should reach out a lot more. But man, day to day be killing me. You know what I'm saying? Growing up, just trying to grow and learn more, and you know everybody get caught up in life. So I don't even take it personally that people don't reach out to me because they be love every time we greet each other, we embrace each other. Man, you know Mac, man, Mac a dope dude, man. Kel, man, Kel dope, bro. Like. Facts. Some good dudes, man. Like, God put these people in my life, bro. Yeah. And it's been nothing but blessings upon blessings when you think about the stuff. We just link, bro. This, I'm an older cat, so to link with dudes that's like my age and, and really click like we click or we come from an old law. We di right. a different set of rules. And it's just, and I ain't I'm, big I'm under up the old law, too, though. Oh, yeah, you under the <laughs> Yeah, man. What, what they say? I'm like the last of the millennials. Oh, really? Yeah, it's, it's new generation. They don't got no morals and no codes that they live by. Yeah, it's different, man. And, I was and, really raised by OGs, not IG. Hey, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like that, man. Yeah, so, so, hey, man, uh, one thing I could say is we always ask a question, man. Like, um, I want to know your top three artists of all time, dead or alive. Any genre. Number one. My pops. Hey, boy, that's a good choice right there. Why? Um, at first my pops wasn't always there. Okay. Feel me? Like one artist that always been there was juvenile. Okay. Always there. You dope, feel me? Dope, Even when my dope. daddy was alive, I used to like juvenile. juvenile. You feel me? Yeah. He'd be like, yeah, you know. But as I got older, I understood why he was the king of New Orleans, my pops. Why? You know? Why was he the king? It's just what he, like. What he represent? No, nobody else's music make you feel like his. Like, a lot of people make great music, you know what I'm saying? But that's real authentic rap, you know? And, and compared to the era that it come from, like, he was the only person during that time doing that. Like, when he dropped this project, Lil Wayne dropped two. You feel me? And he was throwing that shit out the window. Really? Yeah, I'm telling you. Quarter one. They, they didn't even care nothing about that. <laughs> they just care about your dad. I'm telling you. 
That's what it was. That's what it was. It was fun little You think that's the reason why he was mad when he seen? Uh, <laughs> I'm just messing with you, man. <laughs> but they were really throwing like it was really all about your pops project. Yeah, he was going crazy. And that's a good thing, man, because look, I say God know what he's doing. Like a lot of times you you didn't you would never knew he wasn't gonna be here at the time, but God always looks on the other side of what we look at through this pee whole life and see the whole picture. So, you know, I look at my partner, he used to have better stuff than me growing up. He ended up dying at 27, 26. And, but I always used to be like, dang, envy is like jealous of kind of what he had versus what I had. But but now, you know, time passed on, I understood why God let him have the things he had so early on, because he passed away early. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So I might not have understood it when it was going on, but it clicked at some point, hey, man, that's why that happened. And I know, like, damn, that, that's why he was like he was. Right. You know what I mean? Very talented guy, man. Miss Mike. But, um, yeah, number two. Um, like I said, my pops, Juvenile, got to be number two. Juvenile, number two, man. That boy, that was bad. Wasn't it? Which was your favorite song by Juve? Man, I don't even know. I ain't going to lie. Because throughout the years, like, I've always been a part of his career. Like, even before me and him just connected. I was always deep in, like I always like, like you know how people listening to a CD for a certain song that they gonna like. I'm pumping the whole CD. I'm pumping. I know every song word from word. You feel me? It was so. It, it was different. It was arrows of that boy. I remember one it time. It was arrows of because he was with. It almost he would rap a lot of times. Exactly. Like, he was like, with before that he was with Cash Money. Don't yeah, get it twisted. Yeah. But it was phases of him that went in and out of situations that made him look different. Atlantic rep, records, records, juvenile. Like, That's man, right. I'm telling you, it's different versions of juvenile. So juvenile had to be number two. Number three. I don't know who would be number three because yeah, I, I like. Let me see. It had to be me. I figured you was gonna say that. It had to be me. But if I couldn't use myself, and a lot of people might like, they might be like, "Oh, that's crazy." No, that's you crazy couldn't use that. It'll probably be if it had if it couldn't be me, it'll probably be like it. It'll be in between like Young Thug, Pee Wee Longway. Really, you like Pee Wee Longway? Yeah, Pee Wee Longway, like to me, I think Pee Wee Longway like the coldest rapper to come out of Atlanta today. Yeah. Wow. Pee Wee Longway. On side of Young Thug, yeah. Pee Wee Longway. Pee Wee Long Way. <laughs> I don't know. You probably can't understand what he be saying, bro. I'm looking I come at from an era. You gotta realize you got you mess you messing around. You got some niggas down here, man. You got you got Gucci, man. You got Ti. Gucci, man. You got Rocco uh, down Gucci, here, niggas. You, you know who like, Rocco is? Yeah, Rocco. The, look, listen. Come on, man. You got some niggas down here, man. Then you got JD you down here. Listen to what cats. I'm saying. That's listen to what I'm saying. It don't matter about how old right. he is. He said in Atlanta, you can't do this, man. Ludicrous even down here. These niggas got some niggas down here. They okay, are so okay. I would put look, to Little me, baby. to me, no Migos, no what? No, they ain't talking. What he talking? It's what he talking. What he talking? He talking like all right, like he. This is why I said it had to be between him and Young Thug. Like a lot of people look at Young Thug, they was like, I don't understand what he was saying. Like when he first came out, I don't understand what he was saying. But if you listen to what he's saying, he really spins some shit. You feel me? Nigga, Rich Homie Quan ain't bad, nigga. Rich Homie Quan? Stop he playing, hard, man. He hard, but. You, you, you over here talking about, no, no, no. I'm telling you, some right. niggas out here, man. I'm a trapper. I'm a trap rapper. Pee Wee Longway, one of the reasons why I'm a trap rapper. Pee Wee Longway and Young Dolph is the same type of artist. They just don't rap the same. You wouldn't even think that, right? No, Dolph was cold, but Key Glock, Young, I'm a, more of a Key Glock fan. Look. Which is, of course, a branch of Grow Fresh and Pee Wee Longway is the same type of rapper. Yeah, I can see that. But they don't sound the same. He got the he got this sound like how Thug had his sound, but he stand what he saying and the words he used like he twisting it up. Like you feel me? Like nah, I get it. Oh, I guess you just gotta listen to him. Like I've been I get listening it, to Pee Wee since the Blue Eminem, the first one. Damn, real tough. I'm just trying to I'm trying to get with it, man. Like I said, I see a lot of these youngsters coming out, man, doing their thing, man. Um, y'all all dope to be honest with it's you. It's a lot of dope artists. But you asking what my favorite, what my top artist was. That nigga said Pee Wee Longway. Yeah. Number three, if he couldn't say himself. I love Joe Gas. Because Lil you. Baby, all right, Lil Baby, Lil Baby Hard. Come on, there it is. Lil, I already Lil, knew it. No, Lil Baby Hard. But, <laughs> and, and he a trap rapper. Oh, it, I just like, I like Pee Wee Longway. Bro, flavor. I'm, I'm like, going to be honest with you. You, you want to know who, I'm a Money Man fan. Money Man Cole. <laughs> 
<laughs> money man, you know, you forgot about money man. You money man, one of my favorite Atlanta rappers. Exactly, but he not my top. Why you think Pee-wee money? Why, you, why you think money? All right, listen. You telling right, me people you listen, can't listen, say listen, money man? Listen to what I'm about to say. I ain't say. All right, money, money, man, like a be like right there with Pee Wee Long. We probably like you know what I'm saying, one or two players under it, like not under him. About the same. Talking about about the same. I'm talking about on my list personally. Okay, okay, yeah, that's your list. <laughs> Listen, all right. Think about how many rappers Money Man did a CD with out that lineup. He don't really do nobody about Pee Wee Longway because yeah, he, he don't really mess around he like know, that. He know who Pee Wee Longway is. Really he don't really real mess talk. around like that. Real tough. No, I, I think it's dope, man. But you gotta realize where you from. See where I'm from, nigga. That's you why. from the capital, bro? When it come down to what we are, who we are, the essence of our the the way the bounce music is, the way the culture is, where you come from, is on a whole nother level, bro. Thanks. I'm being real. Like the way you sound, it's it's something about I you have to hold yourself in a set standard because to look at all the people that came before you and where you have for. to you know what I'm saying, you gotta sip your dad and all these you know what kind of sound these niggas were coming from around there in them day in them damn swamps. But that's why you don't hear me out you like I don't rap like Young Thug, Pee Wee Long. No. You feel me? You can't. I rap how I rap. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You have but, to. All right, even like, I still don't rap on old cash money beats, old no limit beats. Like, I write like a lot of Detroit Why you rappers. Do, you ever done your dance song? Yeah. I, Which one? A couple of them. And you like doing them? Or? I mean, I just do it for a tribute. Okay. It ain't something I'm trying to capitalize off of. I want you to really hear me. That's why I don't get on his beats, because there's already too much comparisons. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Real tough. Yeah, no. But I like the way that you 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 embrace it, though. It yeah. took you a while to get there, didn't it? Yeah, because I was running from it at first. I was rebellious. Yeah. But you was young. Yeah. I, I, think I, was, I was real rebellious regardless. Like, oh, we covered everything. Did we cover everything, you think? What about you? What, what? Give me something that I didn't cover that, that needs to be spoke on when it comes down to that boy. Man... You ain't, little cover, soldier swing. you ain't cover how hard this project is. Trap glory. Let's right go over now. it. Let's go over Trap and let's glory. go over some of the visuals. I want to go over the visuals. The one videos. Did you do the videos you you put out behind it in the process, and then we'll end it like that. Um, actually, I, I said I had nine videos. I got ten videos out the project. Okay, let's um, talk about one the of best, your slow favorite motion. one. My favorite one is a slow motion remake. Really? But it's a bounce slow motion song. It's slow motion. Now, I like I, it like that. Yeah, but it's a bounce song. Yeah. And on the hook, I got my boy, Alan Cuba's rapping. He, he signed to Wayne. Alan really? Cuba's, yeah. But I got him rapping on, in Spanish. So we reaching, you know what I'm saying, other countries. But I took like 15 chicks to Miami um, for the video. I rented two yachts. You know what I'm saying? I bought them all bikinis. Going in. It was out there wild, and I had a whole case, two cases of Casamigos. So you can only imagine what that was like. It went down through there. Um, we was in the Miami Hermes Mansion. You hey. feel me? Like, it was just a real good vibe. Um, lovely. Man, um, so the next one? Um, my neck, my second favorite one. And it's with visuals. Yeah, all, all these visuals. My second favorite one would be... My second favorite favorite visual would be Switches with Sauce Walker. You got a song called Switches with Sauce Walker? Yeah, I got Sauce Walker in my project. Damn. How come I... Because I we did this like this. Yeah, that's why. I just dropped this. You know? It just came out eight this morning. Trap oh, Lord, it just man. came out Trap this morning. Lord, man. You, know, you heard what happened to Sauce last night. Yeah, but it ain't nothing happened to him. You heard what happened to the other person. <laughs> <laughs> that's the red song. Like, man, dude, one of the most genius rappers I ever met. Um... Man, when I met dude, so I, like I met him a couple of times. He used to come to New Orleans. Man, I got a partner, Trippie. He's have a studio, so I used to hang with Trippie every day. He used to be in the studio. He used to let me record for free and stuff. Um, matter of fact, he own he own New Orleans Cajun cuisine right here downtown Walker Street. So, so I was used to come through. Um, so when I reconnected with him at South by Southwest this year, I was like, you don't remember me. And his partner was like, man, what's up, little soldier? Like, what do we? He was like, oh, you soldier Slim saying, yeah, I remember you. What do we? Wow. So he was, I was, um, they had a book of people be jamming him up everywhere he go, be trying to get verses. And I'm like, man, I'm, forget what they talking about. I'm really trying to get a verse. What's up? 
know what I'm saying? He like, man, give my partner a number, but his partner had already got my number, because you know, they, they already be knowing who I be, mm -hmm. be liking, you know what I'm saying? I be liking them, so yeah, uh, we connected, and we end up not doing it in Austin. I went back to Houston, because I be in Houston, I like Houston, I like to hang out in Houston, I like to go to their clubs. It's just a vibe, it's a way of a better vibe than I would chill, you know what I'm saying, to me. But, that's picking up good. <laughs> but, um, went to Houston, we did the, we linked up, and I, I guess like it'd be so many people be trying to tap in with them, they don't be serious, so I put up on them, like everything he told me, like I had double that on me anyway, so I'm like, what's up? Like I got the bread, and he looking at me, like, oh, all right. So he's like, just chill with me. So we chilling. I guess he was just filling me out. You know what I'm saying? We just chopping it up. He was like, man, I like you. He dab me out. You feel me? Like, man, I like you. Just hang with me. And I hung with him probably for like two, three days. You know what I'm saying? Then even a couple of days after that, I just kept bumping into him around Houston. Wow. And he like, man, you really, he like, man, you live here now. This is your city now. He like, welcome. Real talk, we was in the mall. He was like, welcome to H-Town. Yeah, I was at like Galleria. Like, was at a Galleria. But yeah. like, just the whole time I was hanging with him, it was love. Like, he really showed me the Texas culture. He really like, showed me around in the Maybach. You feel me? Like, it was real love. Like, it wasn't no, I don't too many people let you get in their car, yet alone they back seat. Got alone in a Maybach truck. You feel me? Ooh. He showed me around in a Maybach truck. Like, yeah, like it was love. Man, how did you? How did you? Uh, did you really like? Do you think he like the hardest nigga out of Houston when it come down this rap? Yeah, he's the hardest nigga out of Texas. And honestly, oh, out of Texas. I ain't gonna say he the hardest. Out of Texas. Out of Texas. What? And I ain't gonna say he the hardest. Bro, you got a lot of niggas listen, out of Texas, bro. Listen, I ain't gonna say he the hardest rapper. He the hardest nigga, just how he come, just his demeanor, with the ice, with the, you know what I'm saying, with the cars, like, just nigga how bad. he come, like, he, you know what I'm saying? He come, he like, he a, he come like a Texas he nigga. He on the 30, you feel me? He come like a Texas nigga, that's what he come he, like. He hold it down. Yeah, he yeah, I got some cousins sure. he remind me of, just they older than him. Mm -hmm. So when I think of Houston, I think about him, he don't even realize. He holding it down. He just like a Houston nigga, a real Houston nigga. Like, this nigga is straight up, they should be very proud. The older niggas right. should be very proud. I'm a Texas nigga, so I know just by the way a nigga carry himself what city he is from, from Texas. Yeah. Whether he's from Dallas, whether he's from Houston, whether he's from Austin. You know, just like you know if somebody from Baton Rouge. Right. You are right? You be like, you know. that nigga from Baton Rouge. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You could that tell. Not from out here. Exactly. You gonna know that nigga ain't from New Orleans. That nigga from Baton Rouge. Yeah. I, that's the same way I am when it come down to a nigga from, whether it be Austin, San Antonio. You can tell we different. Yeah, but, but you, you know. won't know that unless you in that thing, you know? In my generation, a lot of that be so different, you feel me? Yeah. It, it ain't where you're from, it ain't anything no more. You know what I'm saying? No, it ain't. Uh, so it, that's uh, from the old law is what that's I'm saying. That's the old law. <laughs> the old law. <laughs> but both, I love y'all youngsters, man. You, man, Sauce Walker, man. Like I say, it's a bunch, it's a litany. I mean, we got cats uh, that that's from like the Dallas area. Uh, Bumpy Johnson, I keep talking about here lately. Uh, big X the plug. You got some dudes from over there, man. Then you got I heard a big X. You heard a big X. Yeah. He uh, then you got yeah. He he having a hell of a he he bought the next wave that I see coming. Um, then you got you know Smoothie dude out of uh, he he with fifteen oh one dude out of TK. That, but let me tell you what's crazy. So at the South by Southwest, when I'm telling you. He he knew who I was, you know what I'm saying? He was like, man, yeah, I'm 15 to 1 artist, you know what I'm okay, saying? Okay, Smoothie. Yeah, Smoothie knew it. you? Yeah. How did how, you, you listen to Smoothie music? It's love. When I checked it out, I'm like, I, I, I'm liking it. You rocking it. it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's Texas. And I, I like Texas. Like, I don't know. Like you said earlier, Texas so much like Louisiana. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? But they authentic. Like, it ain't really, like, I mean, it's funny people everywhere, but it's like they they be solid, they be standing on what they be standing on, they ain't trying to be nobody else, they ain't faking it for nobody, you know what I'm saying? And I'm big on that, that's how I'm rocking. That's why. I, that's what Hot Boy West, Hot Boy West love y'all yeah, too. Yeah. You listen to Hot Boy West? Yeah, I checked them out. Yeah, <laughs> like it's a bunch of niggas that love Texas and Louisiana, Pimp C. It's a Texas, Louisiana thing, Pimp C and uh, Master P, you yeah. know what I mean? How was it, and I gotta say this, is he down there already? Okay. DJ, uh, uh, how is it? Uh, you, you, how do you feel when you hear Snoop Dogg talk about your dad? I met Snoop Dogg. I'm, um, all right, I'm gonna say this. So I met Snoop Dogg on two different occasions. Okay, a Snoop Dogg dad 
is from the part of Mississippi where I stayed in. Okay. Or his I granddad. didn't know that. I think it was his granddad. So, like, they own property and stuff out there. Okay. Know what I'm yeah. Um. So, like, just growing up watching them, and then when I got to meet them, like, it was love. He embraced me, you know what I'm saying? We took a couple pictures. He was trying to pass me his weed, but I was so loaded around with him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was like, like, that's the only person I ever met. It was like, bro, I'm really, bro, I'm with Snoop Dogg. I'm smoking with Snoop Dogg. Like, like yeah. I done been around boo-hoo famous people, you feel me? I but I really was like, bro, I'm with Snoop Dogg. Like, that's crazy because Snoop Dogg is, he, I don't, I don't put Snoop Dogg in a category with a lot of other people. Like, he's so much more, you feel me? He what the black community always needed. Like, he didn't take the ignorant route. You feel me? Like, he did what he did, but he didn't really just go all the way ignorant with it. And that's how he was able to do the Martha Stewart thing. And, you know what I'm saying? All the different podcasts, the Super Bowl halftime shows, um, Law and Order. You know, it's so much Snoop Dogg. Like, it ain't too much Snoop Dogg haven't done. You feel me? Commentation, like, at the games and stuff. Like, you know? So I look at Snoop Dogg totally different. Like, you know what I'm saying? Wow. Snoop Dogg uh, talks highly of your dad. He talks about him living with him when he first came yeah. to Louisiana in apartments with him. Um, when you hear those stories and stuff, did you have you when you spoke with him? Have your dad ever came up? He never spoke on. Yeah, it wasn't like it. It was brief seconds. It brief was seconds. Really, yeah, it Would you like to have him sit down with Snoop about your nah, dad at some point? I love to go to the studio. You see what I'm saying? Just Snoop. to talk yeah. to him about your part because he really had a relationship with your dad, mm -hmm. and to that the same as KL. KL. The same as KL. The same as. Uh, um, I mean, of course, the family, but I'm talking about certain ones who he's not going to unfold himself like he would with a Snoop. That's his homie. Yeah. Or with a with, with KL and Snoop going to have two different type of relationships Facts. with him. Everybody different. Everybody different. But those are things that you could latch on to, you know, just to just get a feel for certain things because they might know some things knowing them that nobody's not going to know. Facts. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Man, um, we love you, brother. I love you you too. family Thank now. Thank you for having me. Hey, she Jamaica. ain't said much. She ain't said my wife for twenty years. She's sitting there quiet. She was interested. I'm listening now, be, because of the history of the music. She know yeah. how I am when it come down to the music. I really love music. I really love Snoop Doggy Dog when he first came out. One eight seven on Undercover Cop. I knew that that changed the whole momentum of what was going on when it came down to Ruthless and all that and and the Death Row movement and all that. This dude was totally different, sounded different than all of them when, when Dre went and linked up with him, when he was with the 213 first. Like, I really rock with the nigga, you know what I'm saying? I think I think the most amazing thing about Snoop Dogg's career in music, when I seen Snoop Dogg with the biggest artists, the most gangstest artists from Tupac to NBA Youngboy. That's real. Ain't nobody else ever did it. That That's real. I, it's just so much with him because of KL too. It's the same, like hearing KLC stories about him and him coming to the studio after he leaves death row. I have memories like that that I hold on to now yeah. because of the conversations I've had with KL or Big Court. He's another guy, Master P best friend, um, that gave me these stories and I hold on to them with dear life and try to get them to our youth. and you know, bridge these gaps so we'll have the history to hold on to. You know what I'm saying? But you one of the dope ones, man. I love, hey, I love the fact that you can't sit down with us. You you coming to Dallas, too. Yeah. The Boss Talk 101 to come on the set. Yeah. So all that's happening. Actually, I'm putting together meeting greets right now, so it's going to be, um, as of right now, I just have Atlanta, New Orleans. Houston, Put Dallas, Dallas on the list. Houston and Dallas, New Orleans and Atlanta. Because once you come to Dallas, I'm going to link you with all of the Let's put it the, All of the, uh, the, whether it be the podcast, mm -hmm. radio state, whatever press kit we can put together. You let's know what I'm it, saying? Let's do it. Man, thank you so much for coming on the show, bro. Love. Hey, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. We down in ATL, man. We ran into young Soldier Slim, little Soldier Slim. It's going down, man. Holly at your boy. It's a unique hustle. And we out.